So let's do an example of calculating moment of inertia. Okay, so here's like a kind of a more difficult example. Um, we are going to have a model of a hammer, um, like the one I was showing you earlier. I showed you how on a hammer, most of the mass is actually concentrated towards the end here, and there's not that much mass in the hammer. But when it comes to the moment of inertia, how much of the moment of inertia is coming from different parts, okay? So first we'll have to come up with a simple model of the hammer. The model we're going to use is, we're gonna imagine this is a big, long sledgehammer, a huge sledgehammer. Um, and uh, in our case, we'll assume that it has a, a handle, which is uh, 0.8 meters in length and one kilogram in mass. And at the end of this, we'll, we'll take the head of the hammer to be a solid sphere, just for the sake of having a simple shape we can work with. Um, and we're, we'll say that that's 10 centimeters in radius and three kilograms in mass. Um, and it's going to be rotating about the handle like this way. Okay. So my axis of rotation is going to be over here. By the way, I highly encourage you in these um, rotational problems to draw in your axis of rotation into your pictures because what you're gonna find is for this topic and many of the topics to come, the axis of rotation is going to be really important um, in calculating everything. So you always have to be aware of where the axis of rotation is located. Okay, now, where do we go from here? So first of all, the sledgehammer is composed of two pieces, the handle and the head. So we want, we're going to solve these separately and then add them together basically. So let's do a calculation over here for the handle and we'll do a calculation over here for the head. Okay, so let's start with the handle. So the handle has mass one kilogram, it has length, 0 0.8 meters, and in terms of its size and shape, it is a rod rotating about its end point. Um, so what you should actually do here is say ICM is 1 12th ml square for a uniform rod, and then you would do IP equals 1 12th ml squared plus m times, we move the axis of rotation by one half l. I'm rushing through this a little bit because this is the exact same problem we did in previous video, and we end up with a final result of that the axis, that the moment of inertia is one third ml squared. So we end up getting one third times one kilogram times 0 0.8 meters squared, dropping the units in that equation. And so we get uh, 0.8 squared divided by three. And that is 0 0.213. And SI units for moment of inertia are just kilogram times meter squared, no special name. All right, now next we've got the head of the hammer. So the head of the hammer has a mass of three kg and it has a radius of 0 0.1 meters, 10 centimeters. And so the next thing we would need to do is look up in the table of moments of inertia, what is the moment of inertia for a solid cylinder? I mean, a solid sphere. So if I flip over to my table of moments of inertia, um, again, my shape is a solid sphere. So that means I'm looking at, I'm looking for this formula here. So that's gonna be my ICM, two over five MR squared. So go back to this. So we've got ICM is two over five mr squared, so that's two over five 
times three times 0.1 squared. And so that'll be two divided by five times three times 0.01 is 0 0.012 kilogram meter squared. So that's quite small, but we haven't applied parallel axis theorem yet. So let's be careful about this. Um, the center of the sphere is here in the center of the sphere. Now we need to move that axis all the way from the center of the sphere way out to there. So that's my value of D for the sphere. And so you'll notice there we've got D equals 0 0.9 meters because it's 0.8 plus this is 0.1 here. So it's going to be 0.8 plus 0.1 because we have to go all the way from the center of the sphere to the end of the rod. So we're going to have MD square that we need to worry about. M is 3, D is 0.9, that gets squared. So 3 times 0.9 squared is 2.43. And you can see actually this parallel axis term for the head of the hammer ends up being almost all the moment of inertia. So the total for the head of the hammer is going to be these two added together, 2.43 plus 0.012 is going to be 2.44. So the center of mass one makes barely any contribution in this case. And then finally, the total moment of inertia of the whole object is just going to be the two added together. So the total is going to be 0 0.213 plus 2.44. and that's 2.65. So um, that's how you handle a more complicated case. Um, things to note, um, number one, you are allowed to break a complicated object down into simpler objects and find their moment of inertia one by one and then add them all together in the end but you have to make sure that you use the correct axis of rotation for every single part that you're calculating. And when you apply parallel axis theorem to move the axis of rotation to that location, make sure that you are moving it from the center of each object whose ICM you are looking up in the table. You have to start at the center of the object and then you have to end up at the actual axis of rotation when you calculate those D values for uh, parallel axis theorem.